You might ask, does thermal diffusion matter in a, in a situation that you're considering? Um, and so we're now going to meet what's called the Prandtl number, uh, which helps you answer this question, does thermal diffusion matter? And it's our, our first sort of introduction to a, a non-dimensional parameter in fluid dynamics. Um, so the, the Prandtl number um, is, is a useful thing to think about because in, in many settings, um, thermal diffusion dominates um, viscous diffusion and in some circumstances, viscous diffusion will actually dominate thermal diffusion. So there, there are two types of diffusion, um, broadly speaking, that we're going to look at initially. Um, there's, uh, there's the diffusion of, of energy, that's thermal diffusion. Um, we off, we've been representing this with K. Um, sometimes we'll also represent it with, uh, with the symbol um, he or chi, um, and the two are related like this. Um, the, the k coefficient is related to the density times the specific heat at constant pressure times the um, uh, chi or he. This is the, the thermoelectric diffusivity. And we'll call this generally thermal, thermal uh, diffusion, um, though it's only the, uh, the, this symbol that's the diffusivity, um, that's because this has units of, um, units of he, this is units of um, length squared per time. And the other kind of diffusion that we have is viscous diffusion or momentum diffusion. Um, this is represented by the symbol mu, which is equal to rho times the symbol nu. And then here is the diffusivity again here with units of nu being um, length squared per time. This is the viscous or um, momentum uh, diffusion. And you might ask, like, which, which matters more? Um, is it thermal diffusion that matters more or viscous diffusion that matters more? This is kind of like a question of, is, is my fluid sticky? Is it, is it viscously dominated? Um, or is it really conductive? Is it, is it thermally dominated? Um, and we'll generally see that in astrophysical settings, um, radiative diffusion dominates viscous diffusion. So many astrophysical fluids are slippery but conductive. Um, and many other fluids that we experience in our day-to-day -day lives um, can be um, sticky, but less conductive. So let's, let's see how we go about uh, quantifying that and kind of getting a handle on that. Um, to, to do this, we're gonna, re we're gonna introduce a number, um, the, the Prandtl number. We're gonna denote it with a symbol PR. So this is the Prandtl number. Prandtl, P-R-A-N-D-T-L. And the Prandtl number is defined um, as mu times CP over K. Um, and then this, um, it, you can see that the CP is gonna cancel between the mu and the, and the K down here. Um, the densities are gonna cancel. And so this is also given by um, the viscosity nu divided by the thermoelectric diffusivity E. Um, and, and as a reminder, um, these diffusivities, these have units of length squared per time. And you can see that if both of them have units of length squared per time, um, this is a dimensionless number. Um, that just means that it's a number that has no physical dimensions anymore. It doesn't have length or time or anything else. Um, the Prandtl number is just a number. Um, and it's a dimensionless number that relates how the um, how big the viscosity is um, compared to the thermal diffusivity. Um, if the Prandtl number is uh, very very small, so if the Prandtl number is much less than one, um, then um, then the thermal diffusivity dominates. Um, you have a if you will um, slippery. Uh, uh, but conductive fluid. Um, and what that really means is that um, 
the flow is going to continue moving, the, the momentum is going to continue, uh, but the flow is going to thermally equilibrate maybe uh, much more quickly than the um, than the momentum slows down. So so something the flow might be coming through and it might keep moving, but it'll thermalize with its surrounding medium at least at, um, in, in the absence of other effects. Um, conversely, if um, the Prandtl number is very large, um, say much 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 greater than one, um, then we have a um, we have uh, we have the momentum diffusivity dominating. Um, and now we have like a sticky fluid uh, that's not not good at conducting. Um, so uh, what that means is that the flow might well um, it, it's sticky. It'll, the the flow will come to a stop very quickly, but it it might not thermally equilibrate on the same time scale as it comes to a stop. So you might um, you might bring like a cold blob into your system and the blob will stop moving very 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 quickly but the cold blob will stay cold relative to the surroundings um, so here's that's that's a little intuition of um, what what the Prandtl number might be telling us um, so what are what are kind of typical Prandtl numbers for for different fluids um, let's let's learn a couple of them to get a little uh, a little sense so typical Prandtl numbers um, for a variety of fluids that we'll run into, um, typical Prandtl numbers. Um, so if, um, if we're thinking about uh, plasma, um, so if we think of like a plasma with, um, with uh, electron conduction of, um, of the thermal energy um, and, uh, and uh, ions, uh, for uh, for momentum, so so in a in a typical plasma, electrons move very quickly. They carry thermal energy, um, but ions they move more slowly, being more massive. But they have almost to zero order. The electrons have all the the sort of thermal content. The ions have all of the uh, momentum content. And in this kind of system, the Prandtl number is about ten to the minus four, um, and that's given by the mass ratio essentially between the electrons that move very fast and the ions that move very slow. Um, so of order 10 to the minus 4. Um, if we have a plasma um, which has uh, heavy ions, but now um, photons, um, uh, photons uh, carry most of the heat around, um, now uh, the Prandtl number is going to range between about 10 to the minus 4 um, to about maybe, say, 10 to the minus 6. And these are, these are characteristic for the interior of the sun. Um, so these are these are kind of Prandtl numbers you'll see. So so astrophysical plasmas tend to be very very low Prandtl number. Um, they're um, very very conductive, um, but also uh, quite slippery. All right. Um, other other things down in this kind of range: um, uh, liquid helium. Um, so liquid. Uh, liquid helium is a very slippery fluid, but it's it's very dense and so it's very conductive and it's able to um, it's it's able to 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 transmit heat much more effectively than um, than momentum. Now, mind you, this is um, non superfluid. Um, this is uh, before the superfluid. Uh, transition um, when to some extent the viscosity disappears entirely um, more or less um, so liquid helms and plasmas are kind of down in these uh, very tiny numbers um, what's in kind of the more middling range well um, air actually has a Prandtl number of about um, 0 0.7 um, and a lot of monatomic ideal gases um, you know, noble gases, things like that. They have Prandtl numbers in kind of uh, the range of um, a, a few tenths or so, um, and generally a little bit less than one. Okay, well, does anything have a, a Prandtl number greater than one? Well, yes. And in fact, one of the, the fluids that you're most familiar with um, has a Prandtl number greater than one. Um, so uh, water, uh, fresh water, 
has a Prandtl number of about seven. Um, and salt water, um, depending on its temperature, uh, has a Prandtl number that ranges from about um, seven for sort of like room temperature-ish things uh, to about 13 um, uh, near uh, the, the freezing point. So the, the Prandtl number of water is actually quite a bit greater than one. Um, and this, this complicates understanding lab experiments when you're trying to use lab experiments to, to model something like the air in the atmosphere or, um, or plasma inside the sun. They, this Prandtl number being larger than one actually can have some, some substantial effects. Okay, so, um, so this is greater than one, but it's not necessarily much, much greater than one, depending on your, um, your, your calibration of much greater. Um, what, are, what are some fluids that have Prandtl numbers much greater than one? Well, there's um, one that we run into a lot here on Earth in, uh, in fluid settings is uh, glycerol. Um, glycerol has a Prandtl number of about 1,000. Um, so this is uh, very, very sticky compared to its ability to transmit heat. It's very um, insulating. Um, if, you, if you go to various uh, plastic polymers, they can have polymer suspensions, can have Prandtl numbers of like 10 to the 4. Uh, but the real champion, uh, in my mind, for the large Prandtl number limit is the Earth's mantle. Um, the Earth's mantle has a Prandtl number of about 10 to the 25 roughly speaking. So this is the, this is the rock. Um, and as you might guess, um, rock is uh, not very thermally conductive, uh, but it's really sticky when you try and move rock past itself. Uh, not all of the interior of the earth is like this. Um, the liquid iron core that has a small Prandtl number down into kind of the 10 to the minus two, 10 to the minus three, 10 to the minus four range. Uh, but the outer mantle has this very, very high Prandtl number. Um, You'll, you'll see varieties of Prandtl numbers um, throughout astrophysical and atmospheric systems. Um, often these are uh, fairly extreme numbers, be they um, extreme in the 10 to the 25, very big range, or extreme in the 10 to the minus 6, 10 to the minus 7, very small range. Um, uh, universally, though, um, what you'll find is that, uh, sadly, um, so we'll draw a line here, um, uh, uh, numerical simulations um, have a very hard time reaching Prandtl numbers far from one. Um, so numerical simulations basically always have Prandtl numbers of order one. And, and by this, I mean that practically speaking, uh, you might get down to say 10 to the minus two, and you might get up to like 10 to the plus two, more or less. Um, but it it's quite hard to do computations at extreme Prandtl numbers. And so most of our intuition and work from a theory sense is of order one, um, whereas some of the natural systems we interact with are very, very far from one. And understanding um, whether or not that is a, is a limit you can extrapolate to or whether they're in sort of a singular limit uh, situation can, can really affect our ability to understand these systems.